Hi, in this lesson, 6-3, Solving Systems by Elimination, take out something to take notes on. Remember, pause the video at any time to write your notes, and complete the check it out problems after each of the examples on the worksheet. We have two learning targets today. First one is I can compare linear, compare systems of linear, solve systems of linear equations with two or more variables by elimination, so our third method we're learning. And then we can figure out which method of the three we had graphing, substitution, and today's elimination, which method is going to be best method to use. One will be better than the other two generally in solving. So again, this is our third method using elimination. We talked substitution yesterday. For elimination, our goal, as the name says, is to eliminate one of our variables. So we only end up with one variable, as we ended up with substitution. Remember that an equation stays balanced when we um, do the same thing to both sides. We have to keep everything balanced. So here are the steps for elimination. Write the system so that like terms are aligned. Line up your x and your y and your constants so they're on the same side of the equation or the equal sign. Eliminate one of the variables either by adding or subtracting to get rid of it. Once you do that, substitute the value of the other variable because you're going to solve for that variable. Substitute it back into the other equation and then write your answers in order to pair. So these steps here, three and four, are the same as what you did for substitution. So let's do this one by elimination. So again, our first step was to line up our variables. We have our x's, our y's, and our constants lined up. So looking at this, we have to either add or subtract our equations. If we were to add these two equations together, we get 3x plus x gives us 4x. Negative 4y plus 4y will give us a 0y. And 10 plus a negative 2 is going to be a positive 8. So notice that our y variable went to 0. So since our y is 0, we get 4x equals 8, divide both sides by 4. Our x variables equals 2. Now we can take this value for x and substitute it into one of the equations. You should do both just to check and make sure it holds true. So again, just as in substitution, we took our value for x, substitute into the first equation. We get 3 times 2 minus 4y equals 10, or 6 minus 4y equals 10. Subtract 6 from both sides, negative 4y equals 4. Divide both sides by negative 4. We have y equals negative 1 from our first equation. And let's just substitute that value 2 into our second equation as we did here, just to make sure and check in our answers. We get subtract 2 from both sides, 4y equals negative 4. Divide both sides by positive 4, and we get y equals negative 1. So our solution is going to be the point 2, negative 1. So again, check your answers. It's very important to make sure you have the right information there, right points. Here's your chance to try it out. And again, make sure they're aligned, and we do. We have our y's, our x's, and our constants aligned with each other. Now we're going to solve this, again, solve this equation, our systems of equations. And first thing we want to check, are we aligned? Our x's, our y's, and our constants are on this, each of those terms are on the same side of the equation. Then let's go ahead and figure out what we can do. If we were to subtract these two equations, our x term would be eliminated. So solving this, if we subtract, since our x values have the same coefficient, we subtract it, and we're going to end up with 2x minus 2x is 0. Here we have y minus an negative 5y, so we're going to get a positive 6y, and the negative 5 minus 13 is a negative 18. So 6y equals negative 18, divide both sides by 6, y equals negative 3. So that's our y coordinate. Solving for x, plug in negative 3 to our first equation. We get 2x minus 3 equals negative 5, add 3 to both sides, divide by 2, x equals negative 1. For our second one, just checking our work. Let's put negative 3 in for our y. We get 2x plus 15 equals 13. Subtract 15 from both sides. Divide by 2, we get x equals negative 1. So our solution is at the point 
negative 1, negative 3. And again, always write your answer as an ordered pair. It is a point where the lines intersect. Here's your chance. Solve this by elimination. Now we're going to, we have two systems here, and looking at those, we do not have the same coefficient for either our x or our y term, so we have to do some multiplication to get that. So let's look at our first one. So again, as we look at it, first of all, we notice that our x's are aligned, our y's are aligned, and our constants are aligned. So we got our first step taken care of. But if we were to either add or subtract the two equations, one of our variables would not be eliminated. So I kept the first equation the same, x plus 2y equals 11. For the second equation, I multiplied every term by 2 in order to eliminate the y. So we, the second equation becomes negative 6x plus 2y equals a negative 10. Now I can subtract the two equations. This is our first equation, second equation. Subtracting those, negative 6x minus x is a negative 7x. 2y minus 2y is a 0y. And negative 10 minus 11 is a negative 21. So negative 7x equals negative 21, or x equals 3. Now we need to substitute in 3 for our x term. So first equation, we get 3 plus 2y equals 11. Subtract 3, 2y equals 8. Divide both sides by 2, we get y equals 4. And let's check on our second equation. Again, substitute in 3 for x. Negative 3 times 3 plus y equals negative 5. Negative 9 plus y equals negative 5, and y equals 4. So our ordered pair is at the point, our solution is the point 3, 4. Now let's look at B. So this problem required us to multiply both of the equations by constants in order to eliminate one of the variables. Chose to eliminate y, so I'm looking for the least common multiple, which would be 6 between 2 and 3. So I multiplied the first equation by 3 every term. Multiply the second equation by 2. So our first equation, we get negative 15x plus 6y equals 96. And our second equation, we get 4x plus 6y equals 20. Now our y coefficients are the same, so if we subtract the two equations, negative 15x minus 4x is negative 19x. 6y minus 6y is 0y. And 96 minus 20 is 76. So we end up with negative 19x equals 76. Divide both sides by negative 19. So x equals 4. Negative 4, I'm sorry. Now we need to solve for y. So we substitute in negative 4 for y. We can do it for each of the equations, and we should get the same value for y. So first equation, we get negative 5 times negative 4 plus 2y equals 32. Multiply, we get y pl or 20 plus 2y equals 32. Subtract 20 from both sides, 2y equals 12, or y equals 6. In our second equation, we end up also with y equals 6. So it's a good check. So our solution for this is at the point negative 4 and 6. So again, we had to multiply both of our equations by different constants in order to get our, one of our variables eliminated. Now it's your turn. And here we have an example. A uh, story problem here, page has $7.75 to buy 12 sheets of felt and cardstock for a scrapbook. Felt costs 50 cents per sheet and the cardstock costs 25 cents per sheet. How many sheets of each can page buy? So we set up two equations and, and solve from there. So with any story problem, we need to define our variables. We're going to let F represent the number of felt sheets she's buying and C represent the amount of cardstock she's buying. So with these problems, you're going to have two equations. The first one, One's going to deal with quantity, so we know she's buying 12 sheets, and the 12 sheets are made up the number of felt sheets she's buying, the number of cardstock she's buying. So that's our first equation. The second equation is going to deal with dollar amounts. She has $7.75 to, to spend, of which each sheet of felt costs 50 cents, and each sheet of cardstock costs 75 cents. So those are our two equations, so we have a system of equations. Now we need to multiply the first equation by, let's get rid of the, eliminate the f's. So we'll multiply the first equation by 0.5 and solve from there. So we multiply the first equation, multiply every term by 0.5. So we get 0.5 times 12 is 6, and 0.5 times f is 0.5f plus 0.5c. So now we have our f coefficients are the same. So we subtract the two equations 
7.75 minus 6 is 1.75. Our f's are eliminated. And 0.75 minus 0.5c is 0.25c. Divide both sides by 0.25, we get c equals 7. So she's buying seven sheets of cardstock. We can then find out how much felt she bought using the first equation. If we substitute 7 into the first equation, into this one here, we get 12 equals f plus 7. Divide, or I'm sorry, subtract both sides by 7. So she buys five sheets of felt. She can buy five sheets of felt and seven sheets of cardstock. Now it's your turn to find flowers. Again, remember, one equation is dealing with quantity. So again, one equation is dealing with quantity. Another equation is dealing with dollars or cost. So you won't have the same numbers in each of these. When you talk dollars, or I'm sorry, talk quantity, she's buying 13 flowers. And she says how many she's buying tulips and lilies. So that's going to be quantity. And the other one dealing with cost, she's looking at spending $14.85. And the cost of lilies are $1.25. And the cost of tulips are 90 cents. So there's going to be a different, your equations will have the different values in there. So keep that in mind. Quantity is one, dollars are another. So here are the three methods we've looked at. And which method might be better? Either any of these three methods will work. Graphing, substitution, or elimination. But depending on what you're given, one method is gonna, might be better to do than others. Graphing's probably the one you'll use the least. That's the least accurate. Substitution, if you have the variable already solved for, or one of the equations already solved for a variable, that might be nice. Elimination, again, if you have, they're already lined up your coefficients of one variable are, this, are the same or opposites. So you can either add or subtract. So again, in summary, the three methods, which the last chart summarized them all. Remember, graphing is a point of intersection, so all of your answers for either graphing substitution or elimination will be written as an ordered pair. All of the systems can be solved um, one of those three ways. They all work. Graphing is going to be your least accurate, though. For some systems, again, one method may be better than the others, the other two. And again, the graphing is, probably, graphing is your least accurate. So bring any questions you have to class, and thank you.